Have you heard? We're not going to be able to charge our electric cars for nine hours during the day in the UK because of blackouts. Is that true? No, it's not. It's just some rubbish stirred up by the media. And if you want to find out the facts, then watch on. So you may know of the Daily Mail. It's my parents' favourite paper, and it's the go-to place if you want celebrity news, gossip, and fear-mongering. Uh, they've just published an article, and in fact a few other publications have as well, um, which I will put the link in the description, but um, please don't give them ad revenue. Charging points for electric cars will be preset to turn off for nine hours a day, amid fears they will cause blackouts if government hits target for phasing out petrol and diesel. Uh, some bullet points there. Government says electric car charges should turn off by default at peak times. Fears over impact of huge numbers of drivers plugging in their cars at the same time. Ministers are pushing to phase out the sales of diesel and petrol cars by 2030. Oh God, a lot of people are reading that and they're freaking out. You're taking away our petrol and diesel cars by 2030. I can't even charge at home. So that's what's happening. So to be fair, I don't want to be fair to the Daily Mail, but to be fair, this is a, a story that's been picked up by a few publications, the Times included. And the rest of the article is a bit more balanced, actually. It's just, you know, they love their clickbait. And problem is, people read that and they don't actually read any further. But I'm going to go through and just summarise it quickly and I'm going to do it in reading mode so I don't give them any ad revenue. Charging points for electric cars will be preset to turn off nine hours a day. Uh, blah blah blah. From May, every new charger will automatically not function at peak times to ease the pressure on the national grid. There is also set to be a randomised delay of up to 30 minutes if there is high demand from motorists. Transport Secretary Grant Shapps is said to be anxious. We don't know who has told the Daily Mail that he's anxious. Probably oil companies, but anyway. He's said to be anxious that huge numbers of drivers will plug in their car when they return home between 5 and 7 p.m. Motoring experts say the measure will be a nudge for drivers to consider charging vehicles at off-peak hours. Um, the government is banning sales of petrol and diesel from 2030. Yes, we all know that. Under regulation is lodged with the World Trade Organization. New charges in the home and workplace will default to not operate from 8 to 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. to 10 p.m owners will be able to override the preset times to take account of night workers and people who have different schedules. Public charges and rapid charges on motorways and A roads will be exempt. Um, blah blah blah, they call this blah, 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 blah. Electric cars have been forecast to create an extra 18 gigawatts of demand for power in the UK at peak times by 2050 according to National Grid. That is the equivalent of six Hinkley Point nuclear power stations. And it goes on and on, and you can read the rest. Um, actually, the rest of the article is a bit more balanced, but, uh, you know, that's less fun to read, isn't it? Which is why I'm going to stop here like everyone else has. So I was alerted to this on Twitter when it's, it's caused quite a storm. Um, but generally, I tend to hope that people read past the clickbait headline and actually read the actual content of the article. But of course, that hasn't happened, has it? Um, because people don't do that. They're, everyone's busy and they just read the headlines. Um, and of course, the other, the other issue is that if you're reading a newspaper that supports your worldview, then um, if you read a, a headline like that, it will just confirm your, the bias that you've already got. And you'll think an electric car is not for me. So the key bit in here is that it's a setting. You can switch it off. OK. It's uh, not anything to get worried about. And in fact, I've got a smart charger and it's already set to charge just between half past 12 at night and 4 a.m. in the morning. Well, that's when my electricity is cheapest. It's five pence per kilowatt hour. So this legislation is actually good. It's actually a good thing because we should all be charging cheaply. We should all be using that electricity. And the reason it's cheap is because there's less demand for it. Electricity is expensive when there's a lot of demand, like the peak hours, like when everyone's cooking or they're putting their kettle on and all this sort of stuff. When we're all sleeping, or most of us are sleeping, then the electricity is cheaper. They need to get rid of it. The national grid actually needs to get rid of the electricity. 
And that's one of the reasons they welcome electric cars, because electric cars will help balance the grid. It's called balancing the grid. If we're charging at night, that helps maintain a bit of balance. This setting is a good thing. It encourages us to charge cheaply. My Ionic 5 here, it costs about £11 to charge this at daytime at the 15 pence per kilowatt hour rate. And it's like £3.60 something, I think, at night when it's 5 pence per kilowatt hour. So clearly it's better to charge when it's cheaper. So to be fair to the Daily Mail, of course, it does say that owners will be able to override the preset times. But a lot of people are just not getting that bit. Um, and the other bit that I'm, I'm hearing a lot of is that is the equivalent of six Hinkley Point nuclear power stations. So people are thinking, my God, what, we need another six nuclear power stations? Or our grid is going to collapse if we all get EVs. And this is a problem. People just don't read an article properly. So you may think I'm making a big deal out of this as well. Um, but here's a comment I got today on the Ionic 5 video. And this is what's prompted me to make this video because it's kind of riled me up a bit. And, it, and I'm, I'm sorry about, sorry to this person who wrote this comment. I don't know whether they, they're a subscriber, but anyway, they've written, well, with the news from May next year, the government is having all new public charges turn off for nine hours during peak times. I won't be getting an EV in July when my petrol lease is up. They're doing it due to lack of electric because we're not producing enough. So no one can public charge for nine hours during the day. Ha ha. Pit the final nail in the coffin for me getting an EV. I don't think they were going to get an EV anyway, to be honest. They didn't want one, did they? Uh, guess what? This is why people have smart meters and the wall box chargers at home are smart because at some point they will have to stop charging at certain times in the day at home too. Yeah, well, that's alluding to this bit about there might be random shutoffs and, and stuff like that. There is always the possibility that the grid is going to be overwhelmed because the grid does get overwhelmed sometimes. Um, it doesn't happen very much at all, but uh, you know, if there's not much renewables, so if there's no wind, so the wind turbines aren't really doing much, you know, or if it's not that sunny, then the solar isn't doing much, and all this sort of stuff, you know, then I can kind of see the point of being able to stop charges from charging just to relieve the grid so we don't get massive blackouts all over the place. So I think the government probably are putting in some legislation like that just to cover their asses a little bit, just in case that does happen, but it's extremely unlikely. So this is like Chinese whispers, because we've gone from having charge points just set to off-peak as default to having no public charging for nine hours a day. And this just shows how important it is that we choose what we read and consume in the media and we don't just gobble it all up. So the national grid themselves welcome EVs. They're not worried, so we shouldn't be worried either, should we? That's the national grid we're talking about. As some people might say, well, national grid, what do they know? Well, they give us our electricity and they've got a pretty good idea of how it all works, um, more so than any of us have. So they're not worried. We shouldn't be either. And I think the government are just covering their backs a little bit. There's a brilliant interview with Graham Cooper from the National Grid and Chris Harris. He's a petrol head, Top Gear presenter. And um, they do a fantastic interview, very well balanced and honest about how we'll cope when we've all got electric cars. So that's the first video you should watch. The second video is from Ewan, Dr. Ewan McTurk, who's a fantastic guy. And he's done a series of videos about how the grid will cope when we've all got electric cars. And actually he goes into a, a bit more detail, but actually it's very easy to understand and uh, it's fantastic. And do subscribe to him because he's great. All his videos are fantastic. So do watch those videos because they are fascinating. And if you want to read the actual government response that's prompted all this stuff in the media, there's a link in the description. It's really in interesting. Um, we do need to manage our electricity better just in general. I mean, if you have if you have a dishwasher or washing machine that you can set a timer on, then do that and do it off off peak because you do save a lot of money over the year doing that. And of course, it just makes sense to charge when it, everyone wants cheaper electricity anyway. So it makes sense to charge when it's cheap. So this is just a way of, like the article, in fact, said, it's like a nudge. But, you know, if you need to charge during the daytime, you'll still be able to charge during the daytime. I think of this setting just like, I don't know, the, the government encouraging us to use LED bulbs instead of incandescent ones. It just, it's, it's good for us to reduce our electricity consumption. It's better for the environment and it's better for our bills as well. So everyone's a winner. 
Um, the other thing you have to remember is that there's this, everyone keeps talking about this 2030 phase out. The 2030 phase out is of new petrol and diesel cars. So manufacturers will not be making cars, but they're petrol and diesel, or selling them, sorry, from 2030 onwards. Um, we won't be able to buy new ones. But there's quite a long time between now and then. There, are, there aren't enough EVs to supply the market as it is anyway. So we don't have to worry. We're not all going to overload the grid anytime soon. National Grid have enough time to prepare. We'll all have smart chargers by then. We'll all hopefully be charging off peak when the electricity is cheaper. Um, so it's not too much of an issue. Just remember that the transport secretary who brought this in, Grant Shapps, the one who was apparently worried, although we don't know he's worried, uh, he's apparently worried about blackouts. If, I don't know if he is, but all I do know is that he drives an EV and he's certainly going to want a public charge in that nine hour day period because he's got a Tesla, you know. So I suppose my final point on this really is don't just read the headlines. It doesn't matter what the subject is, don't read the headlines. Certainly not in some newspapers because some are worse than others. Um, any kind of thing that you read on the, media, on the on social media or whatever, do a bit of research yourself. You know, just question everything. That's the thing, question everything. Because really we're in a world where clickbait rules and it can go either way. Of course, there can be pro EV clickbait as well. Um, and you know, there needs to be balance really with everything. So try to be a bit balanced, read an article, read another article from another newspaper and you know, just don't lap it all up and, and just regurgitate all of this rubbish because it does no one any favors. Now, luckily this kind of stuff isn't gonna to make too much difference in the grand scheme of things. This person that commented on my video, he says, or he or she says that they're not going to get an EV. But I bet they weren't anyway, you know? So, uh, you know, there's still massive demand for EV, enormous demand for EVs. The supply isn't there anyway. So it's not really an issue, okay? It's not gonna, you know, we're not gonna have a massive drop in EV sales because of this article. It's just not gonna happen, all right? So don't worry too much, but read the government advice and we'll see what the legislation is when it is brought in finally. But um, I think in general, it's gonna be a good thing. And although the government, our government do have a knack of putting pretty awful legislation through, and I'm not gonna get too much into the politics, but you know, they do sneak some pretty awful stuff in. Um, I think this is one of those cases where it's actually quite sensible. So to summarize, if the government get their legislation through, it means that smart points will be set by default, set by default, okay? You'll be able to change it. It'll be set to charge at off-peak times. That will save us money on our electricity bill. It will help the national grid, of course. But remember that national grid are happy with us all getting EVs. They welcome it. It's a good thing. And to be honest, the more EVs we have, then the less electricity we're using producing fossil fuels. So remember that as well. So anyway, there it is. That's it. That's all I'm going to say on the subject. Bit of a rant this one, but normal service will resume with uh, videos coming soon about the Ionic 5 and a few other ones as well. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please press the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of other videos. And I look forward to talking to you soon about much more interesting things than this. Bye for now.